Uh, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, how to make recordings with Doceri. This is one of the features that I think is um, really nice about Doceri. It does a lot of um, publishing kind of on the fly, so you don't have to do a whole lot of editing to it. Okay, I've got a new, uh, new file, new presentation. The only thing I've written is just what you see on the screen there. If you drag down, um, you can see right here, there's a little bar. I'm going to grab that and drag it down. And what you, what you see now is all the animation options. And you can see several things here. I can click. Uh, the, if you click on that question mark over to the side on the left, um, it brings up all the options to tell you what the time controls do. So down at the bottom here, uh, you can see all of those options right down at the bottom. Um, where you're really going to play part in this, uh, this part, this mark, the the stopwatch, this is going to control, like, you can play it back at your natural speed, the natural speed that you would write. That's probably where it is in the dead center. You can slow it down, or you can speed it up. You can, uh, the buttons in the middle are going to tell it how far or how fast to travel, uh, these two buttons in the middle, it's just stroke per stroke per stroke. So every time that you make a stroke and pick up your your stylus, it's going to just advance each stroke one at a time. That's very slow. But you can go slide by slide. And um, one of the things I, I find frustrating is these buttons sometimes feel like they're extremely close together. And so I may be trying to go one at a time. And I'll accidentally hit that, and every stroke on the slide shows up in a math class. That's not exactly what you want to happen. But um, if you want to add a new slide, there's your new slide button. Add a new stop button. Um, and then, of course, this is your play and pause button. Um, you can add next the previous stop, the next stop. So if you wanted to go straight to the next stopper mark, which is what this is, the red mark here, um, you can click these buttons at the top. When you are in the playback mode and you've you've played it back and it, it runs and it hits the stop marker, this button turns to turns red and instead of plus it shows a minus sign. So that's if it's if you wanted to remove the stop marker because you didn't put it there in the right place or you wanted to move it somewhere else, you could remove it that and then add that somewhere else. So let's kind of uh, just look what happens and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this bar back you can see me dragging it back and what happens is as I drag it back you see the strokes undoing themselves so this is your timeline so I'm dragging the header back all the way to the very beginning of the slide so there's nothing's happening and I can play what if I just wanted the first word to play well I can click my forward button and it, it goes by each stroke and the stroke is obviously every time that you make a mark on the screen and you pick your stylus up that would be considered a stroke and so I can say well I want it to do I want it to stop right there so I'm gonna hit the plus symbol and I added a mark and so it's gonna play almost all the way to the end and then I can say oh, I want to go ahead and add let's add one at a time each underline so I'll click and add these marks. And of course, that's the last stroke, so I can't go any further because there are no more strokes. But if I begin to write, um, you can see the timeline begins to, to extend itself. And so when you write that, I can, of course, go back by a stroke at a time, and you can see how that changes. Um, the letters or your strokes that you wrote that should say screencast it looks more like screen caft I don't know um, and so when you go through this if I want to drag it all the way back I can hit the play button and what it'll do is it will play until it comes to a stopper and it says okay that's where you wanted to go so maybe you that's the beginning of your class and you want them to do whatever it is you've got on the screen there and you want to take it another step you click play and you click play again and again and when you click play it will do the animation at the speed that you set it is. so I have it set to go as fast as possible 
And so you can see there, it's writing a little faster than my natural handwriting. So I can drink it back. I'm gonna drag this back to about the middle mark and you'll see it go not quite as fast. You can drag it even further back and you'll see it be a lot slower. And I could see some applications for this if you were, um, especially if you're doing things where you wanted to see something diagrammed out, um, or if you're trying to show animation uh, of an actual animation of an object around something or, or, or things like that. So we're going to go ahead and just allow that to finish out. I want to go ahead and pull that speed back all the way up. I generally keep the speed all the way up because I don't want it to take too long to write out my information. And you can do this uh, to you to you have mapped out exactly how you want to do your lesson. So let me pull up a lesson that I created and we're going to go kind of just look through this. So this is a review I did for everyone's favorite subject in trig, which is trigonometric identities. And so if I drag down my, my bar here, you can see all the stops that I've added to the lesson. I'm just going to kind of let you walk through it. And so we click play. What you see here is all of the parts that I wanted to do. And, and I kind of thought about, well, how, how far did I want to go? So here's the first example. I said, all right, now I want you to work on the example. And then after that, I would put up the work. And then I would go to the next example. I'd write out the, the problem that I wanted them to do. And then I'd say, okay, now it's your turn to, to work this out. And we'll come back and, and talk about it in a minute. <clears throat> so sometimes I'm like, well, let me give them a couple of hints or tips. And sometimes I'll work the problem out and I'll stop it at a certain place. Uh, and how far I wanted them to go, and then finally put at the end uh, what the solutions are. And you can go, and I click play again, and it goes to the next slide. Okay, and it, it, it'll just play to the next stopper. And this is essentially how I would teach the course. Normally, I would write out the problems before class would start, and then I would go back in and I would, uh, as I was writing it out during my first course, maybe first period, uh, I, would, I would allow uh, Doseri to record the whole thing like you see here. And I would go back in and I would add the stoppers in between that class and my next class that I had to teach this again. So at that point, I'm simply pressing play and I'm not writing it again. So I have the whole lesson kind of already written. And um, the stoppers might not get put into it um, exactly uh, every time. I may go back and add those as I'm teaching it. It's like, oh, I want to go back and add that. So the, th the third time I have to teach that class, which I teach this class three times a day, uh, the stoppers are pretty much all ready to go. But there is a lot of times where I'll sequence this out, and I'll just write the whole thing out at home, and I'll add the stoppers in as I'm going. Um, a lot of times if I'm absent, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'll do this at home and I'll make my lesson, I'll record my lesson a lot like I'm doing now and I'll put my, my video on my website or on my Google Classroom and my students can either watch it at home if they're sick or my students, unfortunately when I'm out, I'm still there teaching. Um, they're not too happy about all that. But you can see the, the benefit of doing this. It's real quick and easy to change colors as you're typing or writing. It's real easy to pull up the shapes, and you can customize these menus at the top. Let's say you didn't really want a highlighter. I really don't use a highlighter a whole lot, but I might say I want another marker of a different color, or maybe I wanted to use this one because it's got a nice edge on it. And so I'm going to take that down to something I might use, so a little smaller. And I don't know if I'd use yellow. Let's say I like green. So we'll go over here, we'll make it green. Get a good Buford green, that's about right. And so then you could have your markers. And if you notice, if you come in and you start adding text or adding uh, writing, then even if you've got something out here and I keep playing and I'm gonna play it, if I had had text there, then it would have shown up and it would have written underneath my text. So be careful. If you've already written it out, 
don't write over something in the middle of it, and you can go there. Sometimes when you're writing out something and you mess up, uh, if you drag the scrubber back and forth along the top there, you'll see that it plays back and forth just like you, you want to. But if you mess up, okay, if you erase it, then it, it, it's still considering that as an action, and that's going to be just l put into your timeline. So it'll write, then it'll erase, and then it'll write again. If you want to remove that from your timeline, you have to hit the undo button. And so we go back here. If I go to that stage here and I take my eraser and I erase through these things and I back it up and let it play, then plays it and then it erases it. When I could go, and I'm going to go back to that stroke, I'm going to use the, the back button. I'm going to go back until I've gotten to the point where I drew those. There they are. So I'm going to, instead of erasing them, I'm going to hit the undo button and undo all those pieces from my timeline. Now they're gone. They're erased. So when I go back and play, it goes directly to the next stroke and continues on. So that's an important feature. You don't want to have your animation show and then stop and then erase it. You want it to just simply not be there because uh, you messed up or you decided to redo it in a different way. And so that's definitely helpful to know. <coughs> going through this, uh, this is really nice if you're going to make a tutorial video like this. Um, especially when I'm going to be absent, I'll, I'll go ahead and write it all out and then I'll add in all the stops, how I want to teach it, and if I'm going to stop and say something. That way I don't have to worry about writing as I'm, as I'm going through the lesson. I can kind of focus on my explanations and things like that. So at that point, you can simply record it and go. And, and, and this goes on. This is a fairly long, long this has got 10 slides to it. Um, but you, can, you get the point to it. Okay. If I get to a point here, you can see that the stopper button uh, right here, this one is actually... Uh, Red. If I wanted to remove that, I could click that stopper, and now it won't stop. If I can, if I click play, it will keep going past that mark all the way to the end. So I can drag that back a little bit, and so it'll play and go right on past the part I had before and stop at the next mark. And you can customize this uh, to do whatever you want it to do. And once you get done, what'll happen is I'll click. I'll just go ahead and start it. So this would be. It's actual recording on the iPad now. Okay, I'm using my laptop to make the video, this video, but now my 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 iPad is actual recording what I'm saying right now, and it's recording anything that happens on my iPad, and so it's it's recording this little video. Once you get done with your sequencing and all of your 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 slides you're going to put into it, you can record your video and say up. Oh, I need to go do something. I need to go get a cup of coffee. So I'm going to stop the I'm going to pause my video, go do something, come back. In the classroom, I find this extremely valuable when I'm making a podcast. So if I wanted to record my class lesson, which I do uh, usually at least once a week, uh, I'll take the when I'm introducing a new concept, I'll record the lesson and when I give my students time to work on that, I don't want the video to be a long bit of silence or you know background people talking where there's not really anything centralized going on so I'll pause the video and then I'll allow the students to work and to talk and to discuss things and then when we get ready to go back and, and kind of go over the scenario of the problem that we're working on then I'll come back in and I'll say alright let's continue to let's go over the problem this is how it works out that way when people go back to watch your video you don't have to uh, fast forward through all the quiet parts or you as the editor go back in and have to cut out all those big spaces to make your video a little bit smoother. This way you kind of do the cutting and pasting on the fly. So once I get done with it, I'll stop the recording and you'll see at the top it'll, it'll do a little thought depending on how long your video is. And so I have this little video here. It's uh, 58 seconds. You can see that um, right there. A lot of times at this point, I'll, I want to title it, so I tap on the title, and we can uh, title that whatever we want to. We'll just say test. And at this point, what I'll like to do is I'll take my my video and I'll hold my finger on it. I'll drag it over to the 
basically it's the export button and I will take that over to my drive and I will upload that to my drive so I actually have to make this lesson or to have to give this lesson so I'm gonna go ahead and actually put this on my drive so I click drive and it will take me to drive um, and I'll upload that item it's real that's you can you can upload to your drive I like to organize my videos and keep them updated and uh, not just have them on YouTube but what I'll do is from <clears throat> once I get it on drive I'll take that I'll upload it to my YouTube page and then I will put a link on my website and I'll put a link on my classroom page so that my students can have access to it uh, ultimately that's that's the process that I run through when it's going in uh, using Doceri to create your lessons and to animate and to use the stoppers and to sequence your items and that's probably one of the most useful things with Doceri. If you have any questions please feel free to email me uh, put comments or if, with concerns whatever you want to say or if you have any questions about this video mm -hmm.